Julianne Genta. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Order. order. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I seek leave of the House to have my question transferred back to the Minister of Transport as my question pertains to a critical component no, of our transport Lord, infrastructure. No, order. I'm not prepared to put that leave. It is quite uh, clearly established in, in Speaker's rulings that the government has every right to decide who is, the, in their opinion, the most important, the most appropriate minister to answer the question. They have transferred it. That must be accepted. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. OK. Question number two, Julianne Genta. My question is to the Minister of State-Owned Enterprises. Is he considering replacing the electric lo locomotives with diesel locomotives on the main trunk line? And would this mean removing electrification on that line? Honourable Todd McClay. No, I'd note uh, this is an operational matter and is a decision for the Kiwi Rail Board. I would also note that Kiwi Rail have made no decisions on this issue. Supplementary, Supplementary question, Julie and Genta. Why does his government not consider that decisions relating to core components of our transport infrastructure, like the electrification of the main trunk line, is not a matter of government policy? Mr. Speaker. Honourable Todd McClay. No, Mr. Speaker, that's not what I said uh, in relation to the primary question. What I would say, however, is this government has spent more on transportation and infrastructure than any government in the history of this country. Supplementary question, Julie Ann Genta. Would replacing the electric locomotives used on the North Island main trunk line with diesel locomotives increase or decrease the carbon pollution from rail freight movements? Speaker. Honourable Todd McClay. So, so I do know that is a hypothetical question. I guess it would depend how much the trains are used. Supplementary question. Point of order. Our oh, point of order. I Andrew. seek leave of the House to table research from the Parliamentary Library showing that the pollution is 20 times greater from diesel locomotives than Leave us sought to table that particular information. Is there any objection? There is objection. <laughs> question number three. Order. Question number three. Oh. oh, well, order. In future, if the member wants to ask a supplementary, it's important she follows. Thank you. Supplementary Thank you. question, Julianne Genta. Will his government rule out ditching electrification infrastructure on the main trunk line to avoid locking us into a high carbon transport future? If not, why not? Mr. Honourable Speaker, Todd McClay. Mr Speaker, there's nothing to rule in or rule out at this time. Kiwi Rail are assessing all of their options. Included in that, I expect Kiwi Rail to consider all options, environmental impacts of each of those options. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Julie Ann Genta. Is the impact of climate pollution from transport a key factor in investment decisions for Kiwi Rail and for this government? If not, why not? Mr Speaker. Honourable Todd McClay. There are a number of factors Kiwi Rail will be taking into account and that I'm sure will be one of them. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Julie Ann Genta. Uh, will his government commit to investing in upgrading or replacing the electric locomotives here in New Zealand, which would support high-value manufacturing jobs today and preserve climate-friendly infrastructure well into the future? Honourable Todd McClay. Mr Speaker, as with uh, my answers to the previous question, our commitment to Kiwi Rail on behalf of the New Zealand taxpayer is $1.3 billion. I think it's fair that the taxpayer should ask Kiwi Rail to make sure that the funds the government is giving them are used as well and as effectively as they could. The government expects them to consider all options, including environmental. Su order. Su supplementary question, Julie Ann Genta. Would Kiwi Rail be forced to cut corners to save money if his government was actually committed to investment in rail as part of our core transport infrastructure to, this, to the same extent it is committed to spending billions of dollars on low-value motorways? The Speaker. Honourable Todd McClay. So the answer to that question is no, and I've only been uh, Minister of SOEs for six months. I've learned in that time trains are not very good at cutting corners. <laughs> question number three, David Bennett. Mr Speaker, my question is...